Ever since we've wrapped up ranking every item in the game, a lot of people have taken to the comment section and asked that I follow up with a robot ranking. Now I'll be honest, this usually comes across as more of a joke than any kind of legitimate suggestion, but you should never underestimate the lengths your average TF goober will go for interesting content. So today we're gonna make like a high school shop teacher browsing a Radiohead forum and spend the next half hour talking about metal. Now I, in all my pseudo-conscientious glory, have zero interest in playing every day damn mission to gather a concrete opinion, and judging by queue times, you guys probably don't either. So instead we're gonna focus on each robot found on the 10 most popular missions based within the 3 most popular tours. Anything found exclusively within Steel Trap, Oil Spill, Wave 666, or the numerous other boot camp missions will not be factored into this ranking. Another very key point to note is that we'll heavily be weighing each placement based on the context of how each robot spawns. Do they drop down in groups? Do they often take flank routes to catch you off guard? Do they spawn in the late game? Do they spawn in the early game? All of these factors are at play when discussing difficulty, which means that the theoretical list is far different from the practical one. A small crit heavy will always be more powerful than a normal heavy, and a giant crit heavy will be more deadly than both. But when we account for the criteria at hand, the playing field tends to even itself out. Basically, all I'm saying is don't assume that being a giant or having crits will boost you up the hierarchy. It's all dependent on their spawn conditions. Finally, this tier list is going to be based on how a group of average skilled randoms will perform against them. I understand that High Tour Harry with his 17 Australiums and profile plastered with damage screenshots probably won't find this video all that accurate. But for everyone else, enjoy the ride. It's time we sort out which robots are a piece of cake, and which ones will end you quicker than a diet of nothing but cake. Of course, that could be a non-issue with this channel's first sponsor, HelloFresh. I was getting HelloFresh as a Christmas present for my parents anyways, so when they reached out to me, I just had to respond. If you guys are stuck in holiday gift limbo like I was, HelloFresh is a great way to introduce yourself and others to new recipes, all of which are completely your choice. Imagine that guys, unboxing a crate that doesn't fill you with dread the moment you know its contents. HelloFresh has a massive amount of customizability in terms of creating the perfect box attuned to your personal tastes, with dozens of different recipes to choose from. You can mix and match as you please week after week, while also being able to select both the frequency of meals and also servings for each recipe. They'll send it straight to your door in no time flat, with everything pre-portioned, ready to go. Also, they're 100% carbon neutral, so you can enjoy it all guilt-free. If you use my link in the description below, you'll receive 70% off your first box, plus free shipping. That's 70% off your first box, plus free shipping. As I said, I'm personally getting it as a Christmas gift for my family, so if you want to join me on that plan, the discount codes got you covered. So thank you very much to HelloFresh for sponsoring today's video, and now, back to the robots. For the first robots in this ranking, we have the Bat Scouts. They have low HP, low damage, low range, and their higher ground speed only throws them towards your team's maximum damage thresholds even faster. Some of them will chuck balls at you, it doesn't matter, they're all strange part fodder. Next, Melee Heavies, pretty much the inverse of the Melee Scouts. They have more than double their health pools in exchange for being incredibly slow. Their bigger hitboxes and turtle-like agility make it difficult for them to land even a single hit on any class not named Heavy. Even a hundred of them swarming you like they do in disintegration don't really pose a significant threat. Staying on the melee train, next we have the Demo Knights. Same basic premise, non-crit melee robots get mowed down before they can even touch you. And yeah, I know the Demo Knights can technically charge for increased damage, but most of the time they don't even use it, so the shield is basically cosmetic. Lastly, and the only non-melee robots in the E tier, the Flare Gun Pyros. Crit or no crit, it doesn't really matter. They have high amounts of downtime on attacks that pretty much every class can reliably avoid. Any player on your team, whether new or experienced, can usually solo all of them all by their lonesome. Starting off D tier, we have both the small bot and the giant pyros. They're lumped together because they both suffer from the low range and the low damage output that the melee robots do, but they can air blast. A fact that many of Manup's most mega mind of mercs seem to miss. 
repeatedly. Don't get me wrong, they're easy to take out, but if your team soldier doesn't clue in, the text chat will be Reddit karma galore. Similarly, we have the small crit demo knights. These ones are pretty easy to keep at bay, but if you get caught off guard without any investment into crit resistance, there's a good chance just one swing will send you packing. Take the nearby high ground or shoot them from afar and there's not much they can do, but close range classes like scout, pyro, and spy will need to proceed with caution. After that, we have the crit shortstop scouts. In all my years of playing MBM, I don't think I've ever seen these ones land a single kill, even on dummies who forget to buy crit resistance. That said, they are quick on the ground, so they'll be able to run the bomb greater distances when they spawn alongside the small blast soldiers, but offensively, they provide not much to look out for. Speaking of which, the small blast soldiers are also in the D tier. Honestly, these ones are more funny than scary. Their rockets hurtle you across the entire map like a potato being shot out of a makeshift launcher. This usually results in massive damage falloff and large amounts of downtime as a result of running back to the front lines, but you'll probably end up losing more HP from the fall damage than the rocket itself, so they aren't too big of a hassle. And for the final small boss in D tier, we have the Quick Fix Medics. Now unlike the Uber Medics, these ones don't pop an Uber Charge if their health gets too low. So the overly reserved, cautious approach your damage classes need to usually take just doesn't really apply to them. They do have a high healing rate, so they are still worth taking taking out before gunning down their partner, but on their own, they're pretty harmless. Also, to be very, very clear, these are the quick fix medics, these are the uber medics. Shoot these ones, but don't shoot these ones. Next up, we have the Giant Demo Knights. Debatably the weakest giants in the game, these ones only spawn on the early waves of decoy missions when your money pool isn't all that high. This does make them comparatively tanky to the surrounding robots, and unlike their small counterparts, they tend to stay alive long enough to charge at you. But they're still low range, low damage robots that usually won't cause that much grief. And for the last robots in D tier, we have the Giant Blast Soldiers. They only spawn at the end of Empire Wave 4, and although they drop alongside some uber medics, that's definitely the hardest part of the encounter. They might throw your team around like rocks, but just like rocks, they won't be killed. These giants do fuck all damage and don't spawn alongside any other offensive robots to lay on the pressure. So in the end, they're just giant training dummies. Starting off C tier, we have both the Scattergun and the Force of Nature Scouts. As expected, these ones do large amounts of damage at close range, but taper off as your distance grows. So they're not that big of a deal for any long-ranged AoE classes, but for your team's Heavy and or Pyro, who will end up taking the brunt of their assault, they're pretty much an early game health on kill check. If you don't have it, good chance you'll be nailed to the floor. Next up, the Bonk Scouts. Now on a purely offensive level, these ones are the easiest E tier that's ever E. But because they spawn in groups and have temporary invulnerability, this will cause most of your damage classes to hold off on firing at them. Because of this, they'll often sneak their way behind your team and not only disperse the group's damage, but also the money they drop upon kill. On less experienced teams, they can be the thorns that prevent the perfect A plus rating. Also, they're able to cap the bomb while invulnerable if you're ever pushed back to the hatch. It just goes to show that you don't need to be an offensive threat to cause some problems. After that, we have the crit versions of the Bat Scouts. Their low HP and high numbers usually usually serve as killstreak fodder on the later waves, however, on the early waves, this combination can pose an issue, particularly on Manworks Wave 2, where at that point, maxing out crit resistance is a hefty chunk of one's credit pool, but you'll need to buy it if you want to take more than two hits to the face. With their strong numbers, small hitboxes, and sporadic movement, tracking them all down can be a bitch. Next on our list, we have the Fist of Steel Heavies. They fulfill a similar role to the giant Demo Knights. Extremely tanky, but not much of an offensive threat. That said, unlike the giant demo knights, these ones will frequently spawn in packs, which can definitely overwhelm your team if you aren't focus firing them down. But when you're attentive, they're basically damage sponges. Next, we have the crit variations of the small and giant pyros. Dealing with these ones definitely requires more vigilance than a lot of small bots, as even a medic shield won't save you. The heavy is put at much more risk than normal by trying to maximize his damage ramp up, the soldier rockets get reflected back as crits, and sometimes sticky bombs can launch them into neck breathing distance of your teammates, melting them down in milliseconds. They're still pretty easy to deal with, but their threat bubble becomes much more scary, especially with unknowing teammates. 
After that, we have the small black box soldiers. Pretty straightforward. They fire three rockets at once and get healed for each rocket that impacts a team member. They have massive downtime and relatively low damage output, but they spawn in hordes and usually take more bullets to kill, so they'll occasionally sneak in some deaths here and there. Same goes for the small shotgun heavies. These ones are debatably D tier, but they're very much a health on kill check for your team's heavy in the same way that the scout bots are. If you don't have any sustain, these robots will chew through you due to their large quantities and high health. Health pools. More mobile classes don't have to worry, but if you're unable to zone them out, you'll need to pay attention to your health. It's not as easy a win as you think. Also in C tier and moving over towards the giants, we have the giant shotgun heavy. Now in theory, these guys seem like they'd be easy to take down, but jeez is their burst damage absurd. Their firing animation doesn't have an ounce of recoil, so you wouldn't expect them to hit hard, but oh no. They do. Getting shot by one of these guys is a big ass rude awakening towards not having bullet res. And while a heavy medic combo can usually take care of it, anyone else who's unprepared will probably get one shot. Next up, I've decided to lump three explosive giants together. Those being the giant demo, the giant rapid fire demo, and the giant soldier. All three of these giants have very common similarities. They're all explosive damage dealers with tanky health pools, but they don't have the absurd DPS that the other giants have relative to the waves that they're on. This means that a heavy can relentlessly get up in their face and start gunning them down without much risk. And due to the telegraph nature of the projectiles, the more mobile classes will usually be able to skirt around them scot-free. Most of the time, you don't even need resistances to handle them appropriately. They'll maybe cause a death sometimes, but barring the Demo Knights and the Blast Soldiers, they're probably the easiest giants in the game, all things considered. And now we'll be taking a crack at the boss robots, the beefy boys that spawn at either the beginning or the end of the wave, and have blatantly visible health bars at the top of the screen. For C tier, we have the Giant Blast Soldier from Metro Wave 5, and Sir Nukes-a-Lot from Hamlet Wave 6. Starting with the Blast Soldier, He's not offensively strong, and I've personally never seen this boss get any further than the midsection of the map. However, he is notable in being the only giant in the game who won't be having any of your heavy shit, and will jolt him out of his face whenever necessary. While this won't do much damage, it will often push the heavy outside the medic's medibeam range, meaning his uber will consistently get cut short. He won't cause many deaths, if any at all, but he can take a long time to kill due to how inconsistent he makes your team's damage. As for Sir Nukesalot, he's the biggest crit resistance check in the game. If you don't have it maxed out, you will die and die often. Despite that, he's still pretty easy to deal with, as he has an extremely slow firing rate and telegraphed lingering projectiles. He'll land the occasional kills, but in terms of bottlenecking your progress, it's been a long time since I've seen that happen. Starting off B tier, we have the standard pipe demos. These ones spawn on the early waves, usually in groups of around half a dozen, and do large amounts of explosive damage. They're less effective than, say, a soldier bot, because the residual splash damage very rarely comes into play, but their damage on direct hit lays on enough hurt at an early enough point in the game to make them ones that you need to watch out for. Next up, the deflector heavies. Now these ones are, in theory, even scarier than the standard heavy bots, because they too spawn in groups Groups, yet can mitigate all incoming explosive damage from the front. However, they only spawn on Manworks, a mission where a good sniper or a gas passer pyro is almost a certainty. Without those classes doing their job correctly, they can be more of a pain than the normal heavy bots, but it's much more of a rare occurrence within the one mission they actually spawn on. Call it a victim of the criteria, I call it easy picking. After that, we have the Bowmen. They tend to spawn in packs and fire high-damaging projectiles that are some of the hardest in the game to manually avoid. This makes them some of the more deadly bots for new players to confront head-on, but they do have a fair bit of wind-up before firing and are some of the frailest robots in the game. This means that if you have a good soldier who's getting all up in their face, he'll oftentimes be able to knock them out clean without much strife. Next up, the Cowmangler Soldiers. Pretty much every variant of the soldier bots are difficult to deal with in 
some facet, because Project House Fam on mass is always worth looking out for. The Cowmegler soldiers are no different, but they do have a massive 80% reduction to buildings, transforming the soldier bots from one of Engineer's biggest threats in MBM to something he never has to worry about. A sentry alone can solo a pack of them, a stark contrast from every other variety of soldier bot. But when a sentry isn't in play to deal with them, they can put in some work. After that, we have the only breed of actually good demo knights in the game, the Samurai Demos, the non-crit variants for the B tier. These ones are just really annoying. They spawn in packs and frequently target one player, you're forced to look up and obstruct your field of view in order to kill them, and because of their manic movement, projectiles are pretty much useless against them. They don't have the scariest damage output, but their strong evasiveness makes them tough to mow down. Next up, the giant bat-wielding scouts. They have some slight variations in HP, movement speed, damage, and or jump height, but they all accomplish a similar enough purpose to rank them the same. They all act as distractions that spawn alongside actually strong robots to dilute the team's damage between them. They're not deadly on their own, but they're faster and tankier than the average robot, enough to make far strides as a bomb runner. Their presence can be the difference between life and death, it just doesn't happen frequently enough to be any higher. And speaking of giant scouts, I'm also gonna put the giant bonk scouts from the end of Empire Wave 5 in the B tier as well. Now usually you can just form a wall and that'll block them from passing, but if your team doesn't do that, there's a good chance you'll end up with a last minute bomb capture. They're extremely fast, and like their small bot brethren can cap while invincible, but as long as you keep them at the front, you'll be fine. Staying on the topic of scouts, next up we have the crit variants of the scattergun and force of nature small bots. Because they're under the effects of crits, they don't have any damage fall off, meaning they'll be hitting you from far more than just 200% of what they normally would. They're still frail and can usually act as kill feed filler in the later waves, but if you don't have crit resistance, the damage they do will wear you down over time. Now we're moving on to the strictly support bots, starting with both the Jurati and stock versions of the snipers. Now if you're prepared for them by either listening to the sound cue or looking at the top of the screen for when they spawn, you'll be able to preemptively position yourself and knock them out before they get even a single shot in. But if they happen to spawn in a difficult to reach place while you're focusing on other robots, their long range fully charged body shots will keep you on edge. Same premise applies to the spy bots. If paid no mind, these ones can wipe through your entire team when they spawn in large quantities. The pairs of two usually aren't that big of a deal, but anything more than that, and you'll want your soldier and or pyro to dedicate some time to tracking them down. They also make the engineer's life much more difficult and frequently neuter his sentry's DPS through their sapper. They're definitely annoying, but as long as you have a designated killer for when they spawn, most of your team can be free of the stress. And of course, we can't can't forget about the sentry busters. Now on annoyance factor alone, these ones are probably A tier. Their frequency in proportion to the engineer's effectiveness is the only thing preventing him from autopiloting the entire game. Their very existence forces the NG into a state of often vulnerable downtime, and if improperly detonated, can take down half of your team with its AoE one-shot. The reason I can't put it any higher though, is that a competent team who understands how to exploit it can become even more effective than if they were absent. You can farm hype, banners, vlog, gas, and most notably ubercharge with very little risk to yourself. So while they make the job of the engineer much more difficult, that dynamic reverses itself for any teammates knowledgeable enough to take advantage of it. For your average lobby, this doesn't really come into fruition all that often, but it's enough to bump it down to a B tier ranking. Going back once again to the big boys, we have all the giant heavies. The standard, the huo long heater, and the deflectors. They're all similar enough. Unlike most of the other giants, these ones have zero burst damage capabilities and instead rely on consistent streams of powerful bullet damage. This comes with added strengths, but also added weaknesses. The single target damage, although much deadlier than the other giant variants, is just that, single target. Any strong healing source directed at whoever's being attacked will be enough to withstand their output. Be it a medigun, mad milk, or even a blow from the conch is usually enough to suffice. Yeah, the heater has a fire ring that does more damage, and yeah, the deflector heavy is immune to projectiles from the front, but overall, their constrained damage makes them pretty one note. 
And now, perhaps the biggest shock of the entire video, we have the crit variants of those same giant robots we just mentioned. Now on paper, these giants are ludicrously powerful and definitely higher than the B tier. I mean, their damage output is off the charts comparatively, and unlike their non-crit variants, a Mad Milk or Medigun won't outheal their DPS. But looking at how they're applied in game, they're relatively easy to deal with. They almost always spawn on the later portions of some of the most credit intensive missions. And yeah, this video is under the assumption that not every member of your team will upgrade perfectly, but even the newbiest of noobs will probably have max damage and max resistance with that amount of money. There's very little room for error there. In theory, these bad boys are S tier, but when fought in game, the upgrades provided let you blow through them pretty handily. Next up, we have the giant crit rapid fire demos. These ones can very easily knock out at least one team member, especially on the middling waves where having full crit resistance isn't commonly sought after. However, as mentioned, rapid fire demos tend to have a lot of downtime as they blow through all of their shots in one go. So once their damage is dealt, you can finish the job pretty quickly. After that, we have the crit rapid fire soldiers. These ones spew out a heavy stream of crit rockets at a very fast, near unreactable rate. In theory, these are some of the deadliest robots in the game, but they do mostly spawn on the later waves without much support, so your added damage and resistances can match theirs. They still have high enough health pools and little enough downtime to the point where they can knock out some of the less agile classes, but the late game buffs hit them harder than you might expect. After that, we have the giant non-crit burst fire soldiers, not to be confused with the aforementioned rapid fire ones. Despite not being crit boosted like the last entry, their fire speed is some of the fastest in the game, and unlike all the other burst robots, these ones have monumental clip sizes that take ages to burn through. Because of this, the ability to consistently tank all the rockets in quick succession is quite the challenge for your average teammate, even with the proper resistances at play. It also doesn't help that they spawn in the early game when the resistance factor is less present, and in the late game, they typically drop down in pairs of two. However, they do have the longest amount of downtime of any robots in the game, so their deadly assaults will come with a harsh penalty if you're able to tank them. Next up, we have the giant charged crit soldiers. These ones typically spawn on the early waves when crit resistance isn't the most sought after, but what keeps them in check is the fact that their projectile speeds are incredibly slow and are fired at fairly lengthy intervals. So while this may be the occasional hindrance to your team's heavy, the rest of the classes can usually circumnavigate around them quite well. But you know, giant crit rockets are still giant crit rockets, so you'll have to tread lightly. And while we're on the topic of crit rockets, major crits. Yes, that's literally the boss's name. He appears at the beginning of Metro Wave 4 and has the deadliest onslaught of guaranteed crit rockets in the game. And yet, he's still easier than you'd expect. Because he spawns the moment the round starts, your medic will have an uber charge, crit canteens, and shield all on demand. So even if no one on your team upgrades their resistances, that alone will plow through a good portion of the fight. That's not even mentioning the even more exploitable strategies like air blast or short circuit spam, which negate a majority, if not all, of the boss's damage output. That said, if your medic missteps even once, or your team's pyro and or NG don't utilize those strategies, major crits then becomes one of the biggest threats in the entire game, and even most max crit res targets won't be able to contend with his barrage of spam. He's extraordinarily powerful, but he can't really contend with the pre-game setup advantages your team is given, so his killing spree is usually cut short. And last up for the B tier, I'm lumping all three mecha engine bosses together. Despite being pretty different in tactics, they all share the same pervasive strengths and weaknesses. These bosses aren't really all that offensively commanding, but like any boss in the game, they're tanky as fuck, meaning they force the spotlight onto them, allowing for the oncoming support bots to wreak more carnage. I've never seen teams lose to the bosses themselves, more so the abundance of spies, snipers, and engies creating a snowball effect that forces your team on the defensive. But as always, if you're ever struggling, six heavies with crit canteens is pretty much a win button.
starting off on A tier, we have the Gatebot Fist of Steel heavies on Manhattan. Now, this is the only time I'm gonna differentiate the Gatebots, because these ones make a massive difference. They spawn on the flank route at times where your team has other targets to deal with, and their high effective HP makes them a bitch to kill when relying solely on adaptation. Your soldier and engineer both usually need to drop whatever they're doing just to focus them down. And if even one of those classes in particular don't make them a priority, your whole team will likely be pushed back to point A. Similarly, the Force of Nature scouts have this in common as well, as they too often spawn from the flank up top, though they spawn on plenty of other missions as well. Well. But unlike the giant scouts, these ones knock back anyone in their path, meaning body blocking as a heavy is far more difficult to do consistently. Their health pools aren't the greatest, and they can still be sentry blocked, but their run speed and knockback capabilities make them the second best bomb runners in the game. Also a robot notorious for flanking on Manhattan, we have the giant crit bowman. Considering they spawn on wave 2, it's fair to assume your team won't have crit resistance, and without it, the arrows will one-shot every single class on your team. And as mentioned, they come from the flank, meaning those insta-kills won't even be on the radar of most players. The easiest strat for taking them down is getting a demo to lay three crit sticky piles before the wave starts, and detonating each one when the bowmen walk on top of them. They also spawn on the lower portion of the map midway through the wave, but those ones are less egregious. If you don't have a demo who knows what to do, getting pushed back to point A is pretty much a given. And speaking of the crit bowmen, the small bot variant also find themselves in the A tier. As mentioned with the non-crit variants, the arrows they fire are difficult to avoid and have a high base damage, but now they can one-shot you if you don't have crit resistance. So that's pretty fun. Even with resistances, they'll still do fuckloads of damage, but the robots still maintain the same frailty and attack windup that their non-crit counterparts do, so once again, they're easy pickings for any prepared soldier. Next up, the crit variants of the Samurai Demos. These ones are notorious for being the most common cause of death for your average high tour, as unlike every other robot in the game, these ones can't really be planned around. They have all the annoying shit that embodied the non-crit variants. The constant looking up, the crazy evasiveness, their nullification of projectile spam, except now, they can one-shot you from across the map. They don't even spawn all at once, so it's not like spamming crit canteens can solve the problem there. They probably won't cause any massive team wipes, which is why they're not any higher, but I'm with my fellow high tours on this one, they're my personal least favorites to deal with. And after a long break from the small bots, we're back to seeing them again this time with both the standard and rapid-fire crit demos. I debated S-tier for these ones, but they spawn almost entirely in the late game, meaning resistance upgrades for your teammates are far more common. But a lot of times, it won't make the difference you'd hope for, because mass projectile spam is always a threat no matter the buffs. Of course, a medic shield is always a good solution, but it's even more so the case with these ones, as they typically run themselves into it and die before they're able to reload their clip. Outside of that, max out crit resistance on waves when several big packs spawn, make sure you're positioned out of sight if you can be, and you should be fine. Next up, the small bot heavies. These ones can be extremely overwhelming, especially when taken by surprise. They have the greatest sustained DPS of any small bot in the game, they spawn in large packs, and have massive health pools relative to their size. They also spawn on many of the early game waves, meaning your damage and resistances won't be able to compensate for your own lack of preparation. They do, however, take a couple seconds to start firing, meaning if you catch them right as they land, you can obliterate them before they get a chance to fire similarly to the bowmen, but the average team will more often than not be caught off guard and typically require the use of an oh shit mechanic to avoid a wipe. Also, a sniper can clean them up pretty easily, but he's seldomly picked on two cities, further contrasting them from their deflectors on manworks. Best thing you can do is be cognizant of your big ticket resources and use them appropriately. Next up, and probably more surprisingly, the crit heavies. Now you might think these ones should be higher considering they're essentially the same robots but with a 200% damage increase, but practical application always trumps theory and in the context of how they spawn, they're just as difficult if not less. Usually they drop in massive groups or sporadically on credit-laden waves where crit resistance is a shoe in or your team's medic has ample time to generate shields. But just like their non-crit counterparts, if you're not careful, you'll be wiped out on max. And for the rest of A tier, we're gonna be going over almost every other soldier robot in the game because, well, they're all pretty good. 
Starting with the standard soldiers, these ones are a constant threat in the early waves especially. They spawn in packs, provide a massive rush of spam, and they often spawn alongside giants at points in the game where resistances aren't too common. They're scary, consistent damage dealers that often force the use of a banner, a shield, or any other cooldown based survivability mechanic. And when you don't have them up, you can get easily overwhelmed. This also applies to the direct hit soldiers. Now these ones are rare and will almost never get splash damage kills, but when they fire, your margin for error to avoid them is a lot stricter. The direct hit's lightning quick projectile speed takes all the instincts you'd normally have avoiding soldier rockets and flips it on its head, enough to catch any dormant players off guard. As I said, they're not very common, but when they show up, you need to be wary. Next up, we have all three bannered soldiers. The buff banner ones provide any robot in the vicinity with mini crits, the conch soldiers provide better survivability with their added health on hit without depleting the entirety of their clip like the black box soldiers, and the battalions provide a damage resistance and most notably, full immunity to the effects of critical hits on any robot that's walking even remotely close to them. They're pretty much buffed soldiers, but they usually spawn on the later waves when you have your own damage upgrades to compete with their added strengths. So as a whole, they're usually on par with their non-buffed counterparts. And speaking of banners, next up we have the three giant banner soldiers that spawn on wave 2 of Bot Bash. Not only do they come on the field with massive swarms of mini crit soldiers, but all three giants remain in close proximity towards each other, meaning all three of them are subject to each individual buff. This means that, unlike all the other giants, you can't just rely on a high tour Harry popping a crit canteen and going apeshit. You need to make use of the tools at hand and whittle them down through consistent damage. Yeah, the endless amount of mini crit soldiers kind of bolster this fight's difficulty, but that combination of buffs at such an early point in the game shouldn't be understated. Next up, the giant black box soldiers. These bots are a DPS check. Plain and simple. If you can't kill them fast enough, they'll heal themselves in perpetuity and cap point after point. On top of that, they spawn over the course of a full minute, meaning you can't just blast them all away with a single popped crit screen. You won't really ever die from them, and they do walk pretty slow, so you will have time to get your shit together and communicate. But if that never happens, getting pushed back to point A is pretty much a guarantee. To prevent this, your heavy is gonna wanna get right up in the giant's face to achieve maximum ramp up, the medic's gonna wanna buy canteen specialist and stack crits, your demo can lay down some one shot and death traps, the scout should be marking whenever he can, there are a lot of things you can do to nerf this fight that aren't usually done by new players, so hopefully this helps out a bit. And finally, we have the giant crit burst fire soldiers. Crockets are scary. They're even scarier when they all come out of one tanky ass giant loading up 20 of them all at once. The Burst Fire Soldiers have to be a top 3 deadliest robot in the game in terms of sheer offensive power, as even a player fully decked out in crit and blast resistance needs to be careful, especially in cramped spaces. The only reason they're not higher is they have a tremendous amount of downtime that can be exploited pretty hard, but if you're unable to capitalize within that time period, there's a good chance half of your team is getting wiped out. Starting off with S tier and not leaving the soldier train quite yet, we have the kings of big dick projectile spam, the small crit soldiers. They spawn in packs, they're the most deadly support fodder in the late game, and need I mention Hamlet Wave 2, which is perhaps the single biggest reality check among all 10 missions. They're consistently some of the most dangerous robots in the game, and even late game resistances aren't enough to completely protect you. Your best bet is maxing out crit res to get that one shot protection, and health on kill to weather the storm after taking a few hits. But if you're confronted with a big group of them and aren't properly upgraded, quote unquote proper gameplay usually still isn't enough to save you. Next up, NG bots. These ones routinely cause the most amount of problems of any robot in the game. Their sentries act as forms of area denial that the vast majority of classes don't have an easy answer to. This prevents the scout from collecting all the money in the areas the sentries occupy, and prevent your team from properly pushing forwards or falling back depending on the situation. This is most notably the case on Disintegration, a mission played on the smallest map in the game where engineers spawn on every 
every single way. Not only do they lock down entire sections of the map, but they'll also build teleporters that'll transport packs of robots much closer to the hatch with three seconds of invincibility on top of that. Both of these factors give you much less leeway for potential mistakes, so you'll almost always need at least one teammate locking these motherfuckers down. Usually, an NG sentry, a sniper, or a non-beggar soldier will do the trick, but if left unchecked, your chances for failure will skyrocket. And lastly, in the S tier, we have in my opinion the hardest boss robot in the game, the giant health on kill deflector heavy that spawns on Empire Wave 6. This boss has 60,000 health, sustained hit scan damage, meaning retreating is much more difficult, he deflects all incoming projectiles from the front, and most notably, and what puts him this high up, health on kill. This giant feeds off of rookie mistakes and poor upgrade composition. The easier you are to kill, the more health he'll continue to leech. An uber charge won't be enough. He's too tanky. You need to do whatever you can to make sure he doesn't benefit from a constant source of health on kill. I know I say crit canteens are the answer to everything, but I mean it this time. Every damage dealer on your team should max them out and blow them all on this boss. Nothing else on the wave is worth reserving them for. I've elected to make a double S tier for robots so frequent and so integral to the game mode that entire classes and mechanics are centered entirely around defending from them specifically. To that end, let's begin with the Super Scouts. Among casual players, these ones are typically the robots with the highest bomb capture rate, as their immense speed makes them both difficult to shoot and slippery to catch. If they escape your teammates defenses, your only shot at killing them is dropping whatever you're doing and racing them to the hatch. Unlike every other robot in the game, adapting on the fly in this situation is far more difficult. They either get past you, or they don't. Now, granted, the scout has a milk slow upgrade, the soldier can get direct hits combined with rocket specialists, and both the heavy and the NG can stop them in their tracks through body blocking and sentry blocking respectively. But the super scouts are common across many waves, many maps, and many different scenarios, all of which come with different priorities and positionings. It's fair to assume that your average team will mess up at least once, and if it just so happens to be the first wave, it's not the greatest indication of what's to follow. After that, we have tanks. Now these ones aren't technically robots, but I felt leaving them out would be a disservice. The tanks are a DPS check, and they force at least one, but usually two of your classes, away from the main fight to deal with them. Sure, they themselves don't fight back, but you basically leave the rest of your team to four-man any oncoming threats. Oftentimes, forcing your team to fall back closer towards the hatch due to understandably getting overwhelmed. This, in turn, secedes ground to the robots, granting them more of a foothold into the map and minimizing the distance they need to travel before the bomb gets near the hatch. It's a big chain of events that makes a last stand position far more common on tank waves. While there are ways to consistently and effectively nuke them down, which I will go over in a future video, if you aren't aware of your class's best strategy, you'll have some pretty close calls every now and again, especially on broken parts and man works. Next up, we have the Uber Medics. These robots will grant any of its heal targets full invincibility if they or their robot partner reach below 50% HP. This pretty much invalidates all kind of minigun, sentry gun, and flamethrower damage, as well as early game rocket launchers and scatter guns. All of these damage sources will proc the medic's uber charge, putting your whole team at a significant disadvantage. You have to rely on your team's demo, sniper, or gas passer pyro to take them out. An uber giant or a collection of ubered small bots is one of the most common reasons teams get pushed back so hard. And just like the bonk scouts, these ubered robots are able to cap while invulnerable. It's important to let your sustained damage classes hold off on attacking while letting your medic pickers do the job. If you don't, you're gonna have a bad time. And finally, in my opinion the most impactful robot in the game for solo queue lobbies, we have the giant quick fix medics. Their healing rate is 200 times that of a normal medigun, and they have 30 times the HP of their small bot counterparts. This makes them vital to burst down before anything else on the field. Whereas the small uber medics can't go below 50% HP, the giant quick fix medics can't go below 50 HP as a whole number, at least for more than a tenth of a second. While this does put scatter guns and rocket launchers back on the map for dealing the finishing blow, this once again forces the team's heavy, sentry, and pyro to hold off. 
Should the giant medics pop their uber, which they often will in solo queue lobbies, they effectively make themselves and whatever giant they're pocketing indestructible to everything beyond a shove into a meat grinder or a bottomless pit. But what ends up being the real wave killer is how they coincide with the bomb carrier mechanics. You see these three little bars right here? They actually represent buffs that the bomb carriers acquire depending on how long they've been holding onto the bomb for. The first bar is a minor defense buff, the second bar is some added health regen, and the third bar is full, unlimited critical hits. So while you're dealing damage to the medic, waiting out his uber charge if they end up popping, and then re-dealing all that damage once more, the giant he's pocketing is farming a fuckload of buffs should he be carrying the bomb, which most of the time, they are. So yeah, it's pretty easy to see why these ones are so difficult to deal with. They need to be prioritized, they have an unkillable giant chain to their leash, they need to be handled in a specific way to prevent them from popping uber, and usually, small robots are still ganging up on your ass while all of this is happening. While super scouts may have the most common capture rate as a whole, giant medics are the biggest worry relative to the waves they spawn on. Metro wave 5, Cataclysm wave 6, Destruction wave 6, these are some of the most commonly failed waves by new players but they can't actually be easily killed with the right setup. Simply put, you'll want sheer raw burst damage in the fastest amount of time possible to get them down. Crit canteens shared by a medic or used manually, massive crit sticky piles, or someone switching to spy on any of the non-Two Cities waves will lay on enough hurt to the point where the medics won't be able to uber. Really, all it takes is one guy deciding to come in clutch with a crit canteen, and that'll pretty much take care of things. So if you're looking to be the team's MVP, swap your class or cash in the money for some crit canteens, and be the hero your team desperately needs. Whew, okay, we're done. We finally ranked every robot in Man vs. Machine. Now, I'm recording this part in post because after I made this video, my voice was so shot that I just couldn't do the outro. So, more than ever, if you guys could help me appease the algorithm gods with a like, a sub, and a comment down below, that would be very much appreciated. As always, thank you all for watching the video. Twitter, Discord, and that dope-ass HelloFresh discount are all in the description. And that's all I got. See ya.